Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. We begin with trying to deal with this enormous lunar starship attached to Lunar Gateway. Uh, I never wanted Kerbals to be on board this, it was just a test of the system. And so I moved the Kerbals out. We finally can fit them in Lunar Gateway, having removed some. And uh, three of those are in this Gaganyan spacecraft, uh, Jeb, Bill, and Bob, as it turns out. And so we're bringing them back home. We had previously, in the previous episode, brought the spacecraft to Lunar Gateway in order to pick them up. Departing Lunar Gateway is tricky sometimes, and this is one of those times, so I had to do a lot of burns in order to get our periapsis around Earth low enough, but we did. And here, the service module to the Gaganyan spacecraft, I actually made the umbilical detachment thingy uh, for, and so just for show, I used that. I got the umbilicals off first, and then detached the service module, and here it is going through re-entry. Now, it's doubtful that this spacecraft would have a heat shield that would be capable of returning from the moon. However, its form factor is not too bad for that, so it's just a matter of having the right heat shield for it. It's not a technical problem. Dragon is a lot of mass on that heat shield area. This is much less mass. Uh, more of a problem is the fact that having three people inside for that kind of time would probably be a bit cramped. Anyway, so they were returned safely, and here we have a Uranus probe. Technically, it's to one of Uranus's moons, because we're scanning for resources. There's a resource scanner on top. Uh, the engine on the probe is an RD-502, burning pentaborane and HTP. So that's what we've got there. We only add the New Glenn stage hanging around for its RCS, and also because decoupling uh, close to Earth would throw us off quite a lot. I had to remember that we are using a Jupiter slingshot to get to Uranus there, so making sure that we're not like suborbital around Jupiter, but everything is all right. And uh, here I am uh, packing some methane and oxygen to send to our lunar starship to deorbit it. Basically, there's no way for it to move, all its fuel has boiled off, and so we need to send a fair quantity over uh, to get away from the station and deorbit it. Uh, that is not the Daenerys, the full Daenerys uh, Aerospike SSTO we've got there. That's actually the J2 version. It's a little tiny one. Well, I say tiny. It's still pretty heavy, about 2,100 tons, uh, but it's smaller than a Saturn V. It has about a Saturn V's payload to orbit. So that's what we're doing there. Basically, uh, we've got a normal J2 stage. So this isn't as big a contraption as you might think, based on Daenerys launches before, this is not Daenerys. Daenerys, of course, is called that because it's the mother of all dragons. It's a Game of Thrones reference. And also a dragon reference because of the shape. Anyway, so here we are making orbit with it. And the next stage will carry the fuel over to the moon. We also have some hydrogen for the lander that's currently attached to Lunar Gateway. So it's not just the methane and oxygen for the starship. And I decided to try and bring this back because I hadn't tried it before. Actually, in a more recent live stream, I tried it again, forgetting that I had done it before. I just watched this video and realized I had already done it. But uh, so we were testing the return of this. And again, that engine at the bottom, the aerospike, if you will, pseudo aerospike, really, uh, is 30, 36 J2 chambers. So a uh, total a lifting power of 3,600 tons. Uh, they're sea level optimized, so the vacuum ISP is not as good. But here I had trouble, I mean, yeah. Uh, the, the tank is mostly empty, and the aerospike, SS, uh, the aerospike doesn't throttle down that much. So, trying to figure out how to get this right. And besides that, these shouldn't be used as landing engines. They should remain covered so that on splashdown they're protected. Um, Hopefully the covering is, well, I mean, it's good for re-entry. Hopefully it's uh, watertight as well. But yeah, this was a problem. And it didn't work out. So, yeah. Normally the big Aerospike SSTO to Daenerys has uh, Raptor engine pods that help with the descent. Those are placed higher up. But 
I didn't have those in a form factor for this aerospike, the smaller one. Anyway, so this is the refueler making its way over to the moon. And it's just got methane oxygen engines, but I forgot to make it a pressurized tank, pressure fed tank, so the little engines that we have at the bottom, the ED1s, don't have enough pressure, and I had to use the RCS instead. Technically, RCS should be pressure fed as well, but they don't actually require it. So I was able to use the RCS to get into orbit and do the rendezvous, which was extraordinarily tedious, of course. But at least I picked a rather powerful RCS ports. These are of my own design. They're meant for uh, landing stages, uh, for instance, like Falcon 9 or something like that. So they're pretty powerful. And I did get it docked, transferring the methane and oxygen over to the starship and also the hydrogen over to the lander so that we can use that again. And now starship finally undocks and we don't have this huge thing on our lunar gateway, which could be, you know, obviously a station all on its own. At some point, one thing I want to do with the pass-through system is sort of perfect the idea of using wet workshops. The best use of the pass-through system that I've shown in other videos, not in this series, is trying to convert tanks into a wet workshop thing. So that's that's down the road, but that's one of my goals with that system. Anyway, this is I don't know why I even lit the engines. This is going to crash into the surface. Spectacularly, hopefully. The exact nature of the explosion was yet to be determined. Sometimes Kerbal gives us sad, uninspired explosions. Sometimes it gives us more dramatic explosions. This is... Well, it always gives the pause, though, while it decides which explosion to give us. Uh, minor. Okay, so um, a tourist wanted to go over to the moon, and another tourist who is currently on Skylab wanted to go over to the moon as well. So I think it was a special request that they wanted to go with Shinkansen. And I didn't want to refuel Shinkansen, or at least I didn't want to... Well, this was the end of the stream, and I was trying ridiculous things at this point. Uh, so, yeah, we've got the boosters from the Monument rocket, which are RD-270Ms, and, no, or sorry, just RD-270s, not Ms, and I decided to use that to boost up the Shinkansen space plane to rendezvous with Skylab and go to the moon. Uh, but I was still on the Monument launcher pad that we launched that Aerospike SSTO from, and you can't just randomly place it. You actually have to position it very precisely on that. <laughs> so that happened. And this is just all going to go awry. I was probably just messing around at the end of the stream here. Uh, you know, uh, well, for one thing, I had forgotten that the monument boosters don't gimbal. And it's only the monument core engine that gimbals. And so this was hopeless. This is hopeless. But I let it go and we, we decided to see what would happen. And yeah, that that's what happened. There's Katniss Cape Canaveral and actually that's water down there. It just looks like land. So next stream, I decided to try a somewhat more legitimate option, which is this. Uh, basically turning the, the shuttle stack into a cargo vehicle. I mean, I don't know how you want to call this, but we've got one of the shuttle mice, the three-engine shuttle mouse, uh, replacing the full shuttle. And so it's basically just the back end of the shuttle plus the RCS in the front. And that is boosting this up. Unfortunately, this is not the best trajectory for recovering those engines with the shuttle mouse. As we'll soon see, it doesn't make full orbit. So we have to use some of the Shinkansen space plane's own fuel to make orbit. Balance is also a little bit tenuous. You can see the full use of the pitch authority there. And it's starting to go awry, so I have to shut down before using all the fuel. And also trying to clear the external tank like this is a little bit sketchy. Yeah... 
I like the engines like that, but yeah, we would scrape the bottom. No, that would not be good. But anyway, we, we got it off, but I was definitely not satisfied. This was just a test though. We have to carry one of the tourists. I was just testing to see if these options would work with the Shinkansen. Uh, normally the Shinkansen is launched with another Shinkansen. There's a pair and one of them is a carrier plane that's fully just, just full of fuel. And that would get it to low Earth orbit, but it wouldn't give it enough fuel to do anything after that, like transfer to the moon, so it would have to be refueled. So the goal of this is to leave it with enough fuel to transfer to the moon without doing a subsequent launch to refuel it. And this is an attempt to have them on opposite sides. The question is whether having the shuttle mouse and the Shinkansen on opposite sides would help in terms of the balance so we use all the fuel in the external tank instead of leaving some behind. So here we go, booster set. This is sort of a complicated idea. But the short answer is it's it's not good. Uh, as you can see, we have to maintain this high pitch and it turns out to everything was wrong. Everything was wrong. So I settled on having the Shinkansen and the engine mouse on the same side and created our Kerbal Viper uh, who wanted to go to the moon and we have to pick up the other one from Skylab. So off we go. We'll just go with this configuration as is. Is it optimal? Oh no. No, not even not even close. <laughs> this is not a this is definitely not the best idea. Okay, and then the yeah, the balance is gonna be off. We already saw that, nothing has changed about that, so we were already expecting it. And the question is just getting the Shinkansen off without disaster. I won't say gracefully. Gracefully is, was out the door already. Uh, and there we go. We've got ignition of the ED4 engines on the Shinkansen space plane. And it makes orbit. So that's all okay. Viper nearly, well, narrowly escaped disaster, we'll say. And so here's the rendezvous with Skylab, which is complicated because the Shinkansen is pretty big compared to Skylab. And we have to make sure the fins like don't attack the solar panels and stuff like that. I had to move a Gaganyan spacecraft out of the way to use this docking port. That gets redocked afterwards. So this docks there with that docking port extension that we have in the cargo bay. And here the Gaganyan spacecraft is redocking to a docking port that would be inaccessible to the Shinkansen. It's actually between those Apollo telescope mount solar panels. So this can slip in there, but the Shinkansen, uh, it's probably better if it didn't try that. So here we go. And dot. So Titan did that for us, but Titan's staying on Skylab for this uh, round. And we are transferring anonymous pizza into the Shinkansen for the eventual transfer to the moon. Now, I decided that we need more fuel for the Shinkansen since it used some to get to orbit. And so here, here we are launching a refueler. And this on a Unix Heavy, that's a Raptor 9 Heavy if you will. Though I think I left off some of the engines on the core because we're gonna just dispose of the core. We got reserve fuel in the boosters for the assumed recovery of them. Unfortunately, a nighttime launch because that is where we were at. There's only five engines on the core. There we are reserving the fuel, separating off the boosters. And yeah, there's the core ending its burn. And just a single Raptor vacuum engine on the upper stage, regular upper stage. And the refueler gets over to the station. Just some methane and oxygen. For a full refueling, Shinkansen was designed around having the fuel load that could be lifted either by Starship or SLS. So about 110 tons, something around there. Uh, so yeah, I think its maximum capacity is a little bit beyond that, about 130 tons, but uh, 110 tons would do. 
and so we dock and we transfer the fuel and Shinkansen is off. This time with a full fuel load and we'll see how it does. There is boil off concerns I think. I forget if I put MLI layers on its tanks. It's easy to forget that since they're tucked inside the space plane. They're separate parts but they're actually clipped into the space plane's body. So here we are. Uh, this is actually the capture burn around the moon because doing it high allowed us to rendezvous better with Lunar Gateway which was in a high orbit. So basically Shinkansen is taking the place of Starship in this case and well well, they're both methane and oxygen. Actually, it's smaller. It won't look quite as ridiculous. You know, it's sort of a, a shuttle mirror feel to it, I feel, in this case. And yeah, the docking port extension thing on the Shinkansen ha held the solar panels. That's why we just kept it out, because we still need the solar power. It doesn't have a fuel cell built in right now. I think I changed that on a more updated version. Okay, so we are docked. And there it is. So that was the account of the two streams covered in this video. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.